Hello, so this is going to be a video on different types of night vision. Now, I believe this was requested absolutely ages ago by Dr. Terminator Show, and apologies it took so long to do this, but I wanted to do it properly when I got around to doing it. So it's one where I've actually got different night vision devices to demonstrate in this video. So, um, just a caveat to this, when I demonstrate a night vision, bear in mind a lot of my stuff is pretty low grade, you know, like entry model stuff, because night vision can get very expensive. So, this is going to just kind of be showing you, if you imagine each of these devices, you can get stuff that looks far better than each of these in each uh, category, but it should at least, you know, show you the different types of night vision available. So, what I'll start off with is probably the night vision most people are familiar with, and that's this type, what you'd probably call green night vision or um, light amplifi uh, amplification night vision. Now, just to bear in mind, although you can get night vision obviously as goggle sets and everything, they don't have to be goggle sets. Lots of them in the consumer market come as monoculars. So, what this is, and what I'll do in, later on in the video, is actually demonstrate in a darkened room looking through all of these. Um, as you can see on this one, there's actually a cover on the end of a little tiny hole in it. And that's so not much light comes through, because if you have these turned on, um, and it's bright, um, you can damage them, because they amplify light. So, this is what most people think of when they think of military night vision. It's generally green, the display bit doesn't have to be, um, and it uses sort of CRT, sort of photo cathode kind of technology. And the idea is that uh, light enters this end, it's essentially amplified or accelerated, so it gets to that end, so you can see more than you could with the naked eye. Um, this sort of night vision is known as Gen 0, 1, 2, 3, and I believe there might even be Gen 4 night vision like this now. Generally each one is a step above the previous type. Gen 0 is the old World War II style ones where they used a massive IR lamp with a, um, it was an infrared lamp with a um, night vision piece of, you know, kit. And the idea was that they didn't really amplify light, but they could see infrared. So because they had the ability to see infrared, you could use them at night, and because humans can't see infrared, you could essentially use it like a flashlight, only you could see through the screen. So it meant that, you know, particularly, for example, America in the Pacific campaign, they were able to use these to great effect against the Japanese who didn't have this technology, because it meant at night you could essentially have bright flashlights or searchlights on, and see using infrared where the enemy didn't have that ability. Um, but obviously later on in the Cold War, it was developed into stuff that could actually amplify existing light, so you didn't have to use... Um, infrared with it. You could still use infrared as a light source with it, but you didn't have to. So the stuff that only uses infrared is known as active night vision, as in it needs to act to do something. The stuff where it works on its own is called passive night vision, as in it doesn't need to do much. Um, so this would be, for example, a passive piece of uh, night vision, but it does have an IR illuminator on here and you can still use it with an IR illuminator. So basically the only real difference is, is Gen, it went from Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, and it can get a bit confusing with some of the Gens because, for example, modern night vision equipment that's made to a lower standard is considered Gen 1, even though it's far better than a lot of old Gen 1 stuff, so yeah, that's where it gets a bit confusing. But the whole point of these devices is they amplify existing light and can see IR to a degree. So. Now we've looked at this one, and with this just on there, I'll just turn this on, but what I will do is, after talking about all the types of night vision, I will go through and show you each of them in turn through the camera. But that's just this type. It's easy. Basically, it's your classic green light night vision. So, there's that one. So now let's talk about digital night vision. So here's a Night Fox ATR. Yeah, it is the ATR. I think this is a discontinued model now. And this is a piece of digital night vision. Now, this isn't bad at all, especially for the price but digital night vision has not been around anywhere near as long as optical night vision. So for the most part, digital night vision is nowhere near as good as optical night vision. However, the nice thing of digital night vision is stuff like this is coming onto the market for quite cheap prices, brand new, and it is getting better over time. And I think at the very expensive high end, is it the X27 camera? You've got some very, very good uh, digital night vision. But again, that's not the stuff that's mass market yet or all that available. So how this works is it has essentially a type of CMOS sensor in it, and it works the same way in principle as the other types of night vision. It tries to amplify light and it can also use its own IR illuminator or another IR source to see. So the interesting thing of this is it actually has an IR cover, so I'll explain that. So let me power it on. And as this is a four times monocular, if that's powering on, so you see it says Night Fox. And then what we get is, if you can see through that on the camera, that's me zoomed in really fast, if I get out of the way you can see the curtain there, and that's it with the IR filter on. So with the IR filter on, it will look a lot more like a normal camera, or a normal digital camera. Once we take the IR filter off, 
you can see it's actually a lot brighter because it's seeing IR light as well. Now the nice thing is, I don't know about all digital night vision, but at least for this one you can't damage it from bright lights. So I can look around this room with the light on and I can still see and it doesn't damage the sensor because it's digital not optical. So it can obviously just readjust its own sort of thing. But basically the idea is when you're looking through it with the IR sort of bit on, um, everything looks more like it would to the normal human eye, as in colours and things like that. When this is off and it allows, the IR filters off and it allows IR light in, everything becomes a lot more grayscale, um, but, you know, you can at least still see what you're looking at. So an advantage this would have over optical night vision is because of obviously the digital components. You can film and record directly on the device itself. Um, it's, you know, just more modern CMOS kind of mass producible technology, which means it should all come down to a cheap price. Um, and it's harder to damage it in the sense of, you know, like analog stuff burning out due to too much light entering it and stuff like that. The problem is digital night vision is still very primitive in terms of how effective it is. But as you can see on here, there is an IR light I can turn on. See that red like that? It looks purple on the camera because the purple can actually see IR. To me, if I look at this, it just looks like a dull red light, and that's only on the source where the IR actually comes out. Um, at a distance, you won't be able to see it. And if I did this, for example, I can't see that I'm looking through an IR beam, but I could if it was a flashlight. So that's that. Let's see what... Now that's turned off. Um, so what I'll do is, in a bit, I'll demonstrate that compared to the old type of night vision there. But that's Night Fox, and Night Fox have done newer, better models than this one, and some other companies do digital night vision. But again, at the moment, if you just want the nitty gritty of it, most digital devices are nowhere near as good as military grade optical devices, but I think given enough time they will become better because it's just, I think, a case of lots of digital sensors like CMOS sensors catching up with some of the old optical technology. Now, one you know I'm a massive fan of is the FLIR. Now, this does not amplify light or anything like that at all. The FLIR is a forward-looking infrared camera. Um, and what this sees is long wave infrared, not short wave infrared, which is heat. So it's a thermal camera, put simply. The reason this works at night is because you don't need visible light for a flare to work. It can work if there's no light whatsoever. The flare sees heat, which means you can navigate via it at night and see things at night because anything that gives off heat will be seen by the flare. Now, the disadvantage to the flare is that it's harder to navigate by it in the sense of everything's a lot more reliant on temperatures. So if you went out and it was a cold night, and it wouldn't matter how chilly it is, you know, to you, if you had an old optical night vision thing, assuming it would turn on the work or the digital night vision, you could look around and probably work out where things were because it's still seeing, even though it's not necessarily light on the visible spectrum that you would see as a person, it's still light as we kind of know it. With this, because it sees thermal signatures, if it's cold and everything's got to a similar temperature, you'll have a harder time judging where outlines are. So let me flick the flare on. The nice thing of this FLIR Scout is it does have um, different colour palettes, so it has quite a low res resolution display. Now the more expensive FLIRs can, so you can see I'm white hot there, and you can maybe see the curtain behind me, the different colours. So let me just put it on one of the colour gradients. I will put it on probably rain, because that's like Predator Vision 1. So you might be familiar with that, so you can see my face like that, you can see obviously the hotter and cooler parts, and you know, you can see stuff behind me. The issue is with the flare, say I look through it at this room, is it's much harder to work out what things are, and you also can't see patterns. So if I look at the carpet, for example, of the flare, I can't see what pattern is on the carpet, because it just literally sees it all as one temperature. If somebody walked across it, you'd see their footprints on it, but you can't see it as you'd see it. So it's the flare is kind of hard to get to grips with um, until you know how thermal cameras work, because it doesn't work how you think it would work. There's lots of things you take for granted. Another disadvantage of this, you can't see through glass of it, or at least not very well, um, because lots of glass bounces off long wave infrared. So for example, if there was somebody standing a few yards behind a pane of glass, they might be really obvious to your eye if there was enough light that they were there. To the flare, it can't see them, because your reflection and the heat is bouncing back off of the um, actual glass. Um, again, with the flares, bear in mind, this is the lowest cost model, and again, the disadvantage to flares is they're more expensive than everything else in this video. Um, the FLIRS TK Scout is the cheapest model, and this will run for between £400 and £600 or dollars, maybe even more than that. And the really expensive FLIRS are often like ten grand and stuff like that. The only real advantage is, is the more expensive FLIRS are higher resolution displays, which means it's easier to tell what you're looking at, but 
the jump in price, in my opinion, does not justify the more expensive flare models, at least as somebody like me. If you can get one, you know, at the bottom end for £400, for example, like this one cost me, that, you know, has a 240p or whatever display, um, but then for a 360p display you have to pay like £2,000 more, no thanks. But again, for actual military and police applications, if they're not worried about that sort of money, you know, it's not a problem. But that's the flare. So as I said, the flare sees heat rather than everything else. So it means even if there is no light, you can still work out where things are, especially people and animals. So it's easier to spot a person using a flare, but it's harder to navigate because everything is a lot more controlled by the temperatures of things. Also, another thing to point out is, for example, if somebody was wearing camouflage, they're easy to see in the flare because the flare sees the heat, not, you know, the camo pattern that's meant to match the environment. On green night vision, it would be very hard to see somebody wearing camo clothing, um, you know, if they're stood against a bush, because everything would appear green, for example, and then it's very hard to make them out compared to the environment. Whereas, here's another thing, let's say somebody's not wearing any camo clothes at all, um, but they're stood, or they're laying down on the ground and it's a hot day, if the ground is a similar temperature to their body heat, it's hard to see them with a the flare because they appear as a very similar colour or gradient to the ground. But with other night vision, it might be really obvious there's a person silhouette there. So that's something to bear in mind. There's not really one type of night vision that beats all. They're better at certain applications, which is, I think, with a lot of things, something you have to bear in mind. At the moment, some militaries are developing night vision that looks really cool, which is, I think, called hybrid systems, where the idea is that it's like green night vision when you look through it and navigate it, but it also has a forward-looking infrared camera mounted to it. So it means that when you see a person, you also see the heat signature, like it overlays it. So again, that's like the best of both worlds, because you can navigate via like Gen 2 or Gen 3 night vision, but then you've got um, you know, an actual forward-looking infrared camera to detect potential heat sources, so you get alerted to them more quickly, especially because they show up a different camera on the uh, color on the display. So everything would be a green gradient, but then suddenly if something flashes up red or orange, you know it's a potential threat. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is put the camera at the far side of the room so you can actually see the zoom on it a bit. And I will turn the lights off and you can get an idea of what each of these night vision devices looks like when you look through them. So as you can see, the lights are off. There's a couple of like electronic lights on here, but that should be good for night vision. So let's warm up first the old optical night vision, the green night vision. And the problem is trying to film through these isn't obviously as good as looking through them with the human eye. But there we go, so you can see the um, riot armour over there, you can see where the curtain is and the light coming through the window, you can see the sort of Soviet display up on the wall there, um, you know, so you can see all that stuff through it. Now if I take that away, obviously it's nowhere near as obvious, and that's the same with the human eye. So that gives you some idea of how good these are, and obviously the later gen ones are a lot better. Let's just see if I can get that a bit more flush with the camera, which is never easy where these have the eye cups on them. If I zoom in slightly... There we go, right. So unfortunately the camera will probably try and autofocus and mess everything up, but let's just use the right armour for example. So you can see that through the night vision, and if I put the IR illuminator on, there you go, that's even brighter. Um, but again, the problem with filming through these sort of things is often, um, you know, the camera focuses on the wrong thing. But you can adjust with the distance focusing and things on here, which is good for your eye, and there's also eye correction using this back bit. So if you're short or long sighted or whatever, you can get this device to see properly, regardless. As you can see, that's very blurry. Maybe if I focus that, it will look a bit better. But again, a lot of the issues are trying to film through these. And as these devices themselves don't save video to a digital format, there's no way of me showing you exactly what it looks like, you know, as I would see it. But just bear in mind, it obviously looks a lot better to my eye than it does with the camera. But this is like, you know, classic light amplification night vision, which most people are familiar with. Right, now time for the night fox. Let me just power it on. And thankfully, because I obviously messed about with the batteries earlier, that will power on no problem. So if I find where the camera is, again, which is quite difficult in the dark, um, hopefully in a minute you will see through the display. Right, there's the display. Now you can't see much at the moment because I've got the IR cap on. Let's take that off. Oh, look, suddenly you can see because it's allowing IR light in. Now, there you go. So yeah, that works pretty well. The I'd say the Night Fox is probably equivalent or close to at least a Gen 1 night vision device at amplifying light. It is pretty good in that regard. So bear that in mind with it, you know. It's pretty good for what it is. Um, and obviously this has the advantage as well. That has the built-in IR illuminator and everything as well. And you can record video on this particular device and save it. So if I get that back in frame again, which is proving a bit difficult, let me zoom this out. 
and see if I can get that turning into the camera. There we go. Oh, that's not quite right, is it? There we go. Um, this also has the IR illuminator, so as you can see, that's it with the IR illuminator on, on the different settings getting brighter. And the IR illuminator off again. But yeah, with the IR illuminator on to sort of even the lowest setting, it makes things quite obvious what you're looking at. So Night Fox is very good in that regard, and as I said, these aren't too expensive brand new. Normally under £100 for a lot of the models, and some of them, like this one, for example, can save onto a micro SD card. So you can record video and pictures with it. Right, now let's go to the FLIR. Right, so now the forward-looking infrared, the FLIR, or the thermal camera. Let me just turn it on. Okay, it's turning on. And then when it's loaded up, I will put it in front of the lens. And again, this is going to be difficult, but if you want to see actual videos of the FLIR out and about in the environment, they're on my channel. The problem is obviously a lot of these night vision devices have eye cups, which make filming through them quite difficult. But there you go. You can see the right armor over there because it's a different temperature than some of the other things. You can see that my camera lens is obviously a bit dirty where it reflects back light or the flares lens is a bit dirty on all of these. But as I said, the problem is with the flare that because it sees thermal temperatures, you know, certain things will appear hotter and colder than other things. So if I look for it with my eye a second, um, my alarm clock over there is the warmest thing. The right armor and everything else is. Them. Let me put on the color wheel palette because that might be a bit easier for you to see stuff through it. This is quite a good one for navigating through in the dark, the color wheel one. Um, yeah, there we go. So you can see the right armor there. So, yeah, flares are very good for seeing in the dark, as said, but they don't work the same way as other night vision. It's just recalibrating the heat in there. Um, but if I put my hand in front of it, see, my hand is very obvious because my hand is warm. Um, so there you go, that's the flare. So hopefully that's explained a bit about the different types of night vision in a not too scientific way. Um, bear in mind these obviously all look better if you're looking through them in person, not through the camera. But I wanted to show them all through the camera rather than the ones that do on board video. Because otherwise they'd appear much better than the other night vision where in certain ways they're not. The other nice thing is of course the flare isn't damaged by um, the ceiling light or anything like that being on. Because it's a flare. So um, it sees temperatures and heat, not light. But there you go, that is all the night visions. Um, hopefully, if you're into this sort of video, you found it interesting. And if you're buying something, you might get more of an idea of what they're good at and what they're not so good at. But as I said, the more you spend on these things, typically the better they are. But you also need to bear in mind that some models are just better than others anyway. And for certain applications, some things are better than others as well.